Good morning, doctors. I am Dr. Ravindra Patel, representing Intas Company and Animal Health Business, New Division. We are going through an extraordinary and challenging time. It's nearly one month that our country is under lockdown. This situation has brought very special responsibility on all the healthcare professionals and industry to maintain their commitment towards veterinarian and particularly pet practitioner in small and big towns. At Intas Animal Health, we are constantly working to support you with supply of products and solution that can help you to serve your patient and of course, pet parents. Though we are unable to meet you personally, but we believe Technology has helped us to stay connected with you digitally and communication platforms. COVID-19 is a novel disease for the world and also novel situation for your practice. While it is important to keep yourself safe in current situation, we also know paid practitioner you are facing tough time where you need to cure suffering pets and also assure paid parents about commitment as practitioner, that too with available resources, limitations of laws, regulations, and maintain ethics. It is quite possible that new trends in practice may emerge and more understanding of regulations. ITX, privatizing emergencies, accidental cases, and medical legal requirements of electronic prescription may be required by veterinarians. In TAS, as a responsible animal health com uh, healthcare company, would like to get you more interesting information, knowledge, and discussion at this need of the hour and strengthen your effort in current situation. So dear viewers, today we have industry expert, Dr. Ashri Viswas Rao with us to talk us on current scenario and overcoming the challenges in small animal practices. Dr. S. V. Vishwas Rao is ex-faculty of Bombay Veterinary College and he taught surgery near about 25 years and practices companion animal surgeon in Mumbai. He did BVSC from Bombay Veterinary College in year of 1985 and he won a gold medal during his uh, graduation. He's awarded ICR fellowship for surgery in MBSC and he completed PhD in surgery. He's a recipient of four times best teacher award. And also he's a recipient of five gold medal at national level in surgery and imaging. We are privileged to have him on board. Despite of the busy schedule, Dr. Vishwas Rao accept our invitation and help us with more information about how to overcome the special challenges in a special time. Before we hand over this session to him, we would like to tell you, our viewers, that this is a live program, so you can post your questions in comment box provided on screen. We request him to address the, uh, at the uh, end of the session the uh, questions. Rest assured, in case any query left, we will come back to you with his response to you. So now I request Dr. Vishwas Rao to take us through the session. Thank you. Namaskar. My topic today is current scenario and overcoming the challenges in small animal practice. My dear vets, tomorrow is the World Veterinary Day. I convey my greetings and good wishes to all my veterinary professional brothers and sisters. Hope all of you are safe 
and doing everything to prevent the spread of coronavirus in our country. See, some situations are beyond our control. No matter what we do, we should instead focus on the things that are within our control, because that's the only way we can make a change and help our veterinary profession. So, what are the things we are doing? We are postponing elective and non-emergency procedures. We are considering extra precautions regarding veterinary staff, which is working with us, those who are older adults, or those with chronic medical conditions. See, facing difficulties is inevitable. Learning from them is optional. So let us all learn from this current scenario. I am confident that while discharging your duties as companion animal veterinary doctors, you will be following the norms laid down by the World Health Organization, the Government of India, the respective state governments, and the local municipal bodies. True greatness of the profession comes not when we get rid of the problems, but when we change our relationship to them. We must see the current scenario as a potential source of awakening to learn. Many of us are trying to help the pet owners either by attending emergency clinics or hospitals, or some of us are working from home. If you are working from home, then either you're using your telephone lines, emails, WhatsApp, or any other internet-based platforms, which are available with the veterinarian as well as with the pet parent. See, at the other end of the telephone line, we have pet parents who are extremely anxious. Okay, so many of us are trying to help the pet owners either by attending emergency cases working from home or hospitals. If you're working from home, then either you have telephone lines, emails, WhatsApp messenger services, or any other internet-based platforms which are available to both veterinarians and the pet parents. See, remember, at the other end of the telephone line, you have a pet parent who are anxious to get medical assistance from a veterinary doctor. But as a clinician, we understand the importance of a thorough clinical examination in making a diagnosis and deciding the line of treatment. So in the present situation, it may be difficult for the pet parent to bring his pet to the clinic, or it may be even difficult for you to go to the parent uh, to the pet's place because of the lockdown situation and guidelines of restricted movement. This is where Telemedicine will play a role. So in today's talk, let us briefly understand the concept of veterinary telemedicine. Telemedicine provides safety for both the veterinarians, the pet and the pet parent in situations where there's a risk of contagious infections. So what is telemedicine? Telemedicine is healing from a distance. See, some time ago, it was considered as a futuristic and an experimental tool, but today it is a reality. Please note, telemedicine is a tool of practice. It is not a separate subject or a specialty within the veterinary profession. Telemedicine allows a new form of veterinary doctor, pet parent relationship, but, ne but this needs mutual trust and acceptance. So recognizing and learning about communication challenges in telephone medicine is essential today for good clinical practice. See, when we studied veterinary medicine, telemedicine was not included in the veterinary curriculum. We were only taught by our professors that an ECG could be transmitted through a telephone line. But we are still using telephones, telephones to make appointments, telephone to send vaccination reminders, Telephone, to, uh, telephone calls to, uh, for vaccinations and deworming reminders. So we are using telephones, but now we need to upscale the use. So in this talk, 
we explore the global as well as the indian legal perspective pertaining to the application of veterinary telemedicine see it is a time that veterinary profession in india needs to evolve because the situation demands it to the best of my knowledge there are no specific laws and you may correct me if i'm wrong there are no specific laws for registration and practice of telemedicine or virtual consultation for veterinary medicine in india but telemedicine and virtual consultation is governed by a combination of laws that govern the practice of veterinary medicine and information technology with its associated rules and regulations see the veterinarian must exercise a thorough professional judgment to decide whether a particular case is appropriate for teleconsultation in a given situation or it is better that the pet is brought to the clinic or the hospital or taken to the nearest hospital that you have to judge telemedicine should however be avoided in emergency when a veterinary doctor is available and telemedicine consultation should be limited to life saving measures counseling and advice on referral veterinary practitioners can use any telemedicine tools like telephone video internet landlines whatsapp facebook messenger services skype email fax etc all these technologies have their respective strengths weaknesses and contexts which may be appropriate in a particular situation or may be inadequate to deliver proper care so primarily we know these communications are basically audio video and text so when we are actually practicing in a clinic or in a hospital what are the laws we follow we follow the indian veterinary council act the code of veterinary practitioners 1992 and we also follow the drug and cosmetic act 1940 and the drug and cosmetic rules 1945 but when we are using telemedicine then we also need to follow the information technology act 2000 it act 2000 the rules made in 2011 commercial communication regulations 2007 telecom commercial communication customer preference regulation 2010 and if you are charging a fee for teleconsultation then you also need to bear in mind the consumer protection act also remember follow the guidelines if you are doing telemedicine or teleconsultation across a state border or an international border there are certain medico legal requirements regarding telemedicine telemedicine consultation should never be anonymous telemedicine consultation can only be done when there with an existing pet parent and a veterinary doctor relationship with the exception that an advice is given in an emergency zero the consent is implied but an explicit content consent can also be obtained in the form of a text message or in the say by email or by sms or by whatsapp a simple consent like yes i consent to avail consultation for my pet via telemedicine in such simple words the consent can be obtained remember informed consent is also one of the major requirement of the data protection rules the pet parent must be informed see the pet parent might send you the lab reports of his pet the sonography reports of his pet the radiograph of his pet which you will download in your computer or be transferred to a third party so you must very carefully tell the pet owner pet parent of where how you are going to transmit this data you must take his consent once the doctor pet parent relationship is established it is the responsibility of the veterinary doctor to provide 
due care and treatment which is expected from a professional in a given circumstances do not provide telemedicine consultation outside your jurisdiction area i'll give an example i am from mumbai i have registered with maharashtra state veterinary council i know in what area i can practice what happens if someone from outside the area calls me up or someone i have an international call i need to be very careful veterinarians should also consider the mode technologies available whether the mode they are using for telemedicine whether it is adequate for diagnosis or inadequate for diagnosis what you can do is you can do telemonitoring like a patient has come to your clinic you have examined the patient has gone home so you can find out how it is doing whether it is getting better whether there are any other complications so basically a basic follow up can be done also tele advice can be done this is a general advice that is not intended to make a diagnosis give a prognosis or even suggest treatment or tele triage can be done depending upon whether it is urgent whether the case is urgent or a non urgent condition see like any other technology telemedicine services can be abused it has its own risks drawbacks and limitations however these things can be mitigated through an appropriate guidelines these guidelines should be used in conjunction with other standard clinical protocols or policies telemedicine does not give you the liberty of bypassing all the clinical protocols so as far as possible try to follow standard clinical protocol or policies see telemedicine also has its downsides because of its virtual nature online interactions are impersonal and we know to make a complete diagnosis we need to carry out a thorough physical examination so veterinary doctors will require advanced communication skills or slightly better communication skills to compensate for the loss of visual cues which we have in a clinics or in a hospital communicating by telephone also has other advantages disadvantages because the visual cues are not there which are essential to make a diagnosis asynchronous communications like emails we cannot use for cases which have acute illness or which have a short duration or a short period i'll give an example i had a young boy calling me up early morning and saying that his dog had fits i carefully asked him how long this fits have been there he said last two three days my dog is having fits in the same breath he also told me that every summer his dog gets fits i asked the dog's name everything i asked the details of the dog and then went through my record the record which is there with me medical record i found i had never mentioned about fits in that dog's medical history second thing i noticed was if a dog is having fits the tone and anxious nature should have been in that telephone call which was not there i figured that there is something wrong with the history and i also found out that every time this dog was brought to my clinic it was his parents who used to bring the dog and not the young fellow who was on the telephone line i requested him whether i could talk to his parents so one of the parents came on line and i asked them what is the problem with your dog they said last 2 3 days my dog is having lot of ticks the young boy had told me fits and when i found out the history it was ticks small difference in words big difference in treatment so sometimes you need to dig out history to find out the truth especially in telecommunications sometimes when people call you up on telephone there is too much of background noise you can't hear what the pet parent is trying to tell you sometimes the dogs are barking behind sometimes the signal quality is so poor that you you cannot really hear what the pet parent are saying in such cases you very very politely request the pet parent that you could go into another room and talk or if it is not urgent 
then we could suggest postponing the talk when the signal quality improves. Telemedicine providers have identified key barriers in telecommunication, in these telephone consultations. The first is time constraint. Pet parents are trying to tell you too many things within a short time. Two, they are seeing how their dog is suffering or what is happening to their pet, but they are unable to phrase it. They are unable to deliver it to the doctor. And sometimes they have a divided attention between the pet and the doctor they are calling. So, tone, speech pattern, pauses, and pitch can yield important information about pet parents' feelings and intentions. So what do you do when you're hearing something, a complaint on telephone? Speak directly to the pet parent who takes care of the pet. For example, as a doctor, you ask them on telephone, has your dog eaten food today? The fellow will say, just one minute. Let me ask my mother. She is the one who feeds the dog. Then you ask, has your dog passed tools, motions? He will say, just wait. Let me ask my help because he's the one who takes the dog down for his big job and small job. So you need to identify whom to talk to and try to gather as much history as possible. And then you can make a, a follow-up call. Find out whether the dog is doing better or worse, any new symptoms are developing. You must always summarize what you have told the pet parent on telephone. You must ensure that he's understood what you have told. Also, please remember, ask if the ask the person if he's if he has any outstanding queries or concerns. Does he want to say, does he want to tell a doctor anything else? Most importantly, let the caller disconnect the telephone line because that will indicate that he has nothing more to say. You can tell the pet parent when you're going to call back. See, it depends on your schedule, depending on your busy schedule, whether you'll call back after 15 minutes or one hour or two hours. When you're talking, be attentive, be friendly, be professional, task-oriented, but avoid social conversations. See, errors in telephone communication can result in outcome which can cause minor inconvenience or it can, range, it can range to a serious compromise in the safety of the pet. We should also check whether the pet parent can speak freely. Sometimes, you know, I've come across pet parents who are so emotional. The pet is very critical. When they are calling you, they are crying. They can't talk to you. In such cases, you need patience. You allow the pet's parents' emotion to settle down, and then you can talk. So, so they're able to convey to you what exactly is happening. Other things is never give important test results or lab results on telephone or never leave them on an answering machine. If at the other end of the telephone line is an answering machine when you call up, you keep a message that I'm Dr. So-and-so, please call up when you are free. I need to discuss the lab report with you. Sometimes the pet parents make inappropriate requests. Use phrases that are polite and show empathy. I wish I could, but I'm sorry I can't. Use this when there is difficulty in saying no. See, pet parents trust veterinary doctors while seeking treatment and confide with them. One basic feature of telephone consultation is that, or telemedicine is that, the onus, the responsibility of ensuring that information has been correctly reached to the pet parent, understood by the pet parent, lies with the veterinary doctor. Remember also, sometimes reassurance is as important as symptom relief for many pet parents. Reassure them. I'll give you one more example. I had a client who kept on texting me that I need to suggest a better laxative for a pet because her dog was constipated last two, three days. After going to the medical record, I found out that this was a two-year-old Pomeranian, Pomeranian dog 
very difficult to handle a little snappy right she called me up and said doctor why don't you suggest me a good laxative for my pet since it's not past motion for two days she also told me that she had gone to a local vet who had prescribed a laxative and she has given it for two days but the condition has now become worse the dog is trying to bite its tail and there is blood coming out now i politely asked her whether the previous vet had examined the dog she said doctor you know how my dog is it won't allow to touch also so i said is it possible for you to send me a photograph of that bleeding point the bleeding area she obliged she sent it to me and wow there was a maggot wound near the anus so maggot wound near the anus was causing irritation to the dog the dog was trying to bite it was bleeding she had diagnosed it to be she herself had diagnosed it that was constipation and she was asking vets for a laxative so visual clues are also very important before you, you tell something on telephone remember in all cases of emergency the pet parent must be advised for an examination by a veterinary doctor at the earliest you can give a follow up call and find out how the illness is progressing we as veterinarians must have a very balanced approach in an emergency conditions we can advise first aid we can advise counseling or even facilitate referral to a hospital what happens what do we do when accident cases what do we advise there's a dog hit by a car you want to advise they call you up so what advice we can give simple like take a bed sheet roll the dog over a bed sheet and hold it like a hammock so that while lifting the dog the dog doesn't bite you because of pain to don't take care of the spine because the spine is injured lift on the dog will traumatize the spine further so take care of the spine if there's any bleeding wound tie a clean cloth or a bandage to prevent further bleeding or further contamination of the wound so these things you can tell tell on telephone these are general things so short simple repetitive statements should be used failure to collect available information can compromise the safety of the pet communication challenges can generate common and in some cases very severe complications so be very careful in listening to what the pet owner is trying to tell you pet parent is trying to tell you now once you have made a diagnosis now you write, want to write down an electronic prescription e prescription which is electronic prescribing electronic generation and transmission of a veterinary prescription please note please remember very important prescribing medicines without an appropriate diagnosis or even a provisional diagnosis will lead to is called as a professional misconduct a veterinarian providing consultation or e prescribing should never prescribe medicines that have a high potential of abuse or could harm the pet the society at large if it is used improperly so while prescribing medicines you need to be very very careful veterinary profession is a stressful profession we all know but let us learn to manage the situation let us all keep a positive attitude except that events that there are events which you cannot control be assertive instead of aggressive you also set limits appropriately because sometimes you might have to say no to pet parents otherwise sometimes it adds, adds stress to our life see we are caretakers of the animals so we need to take care of the caretaker also when we encounter problems and difficulties in a profession which we are now seeing so when we encounter problems and difficulties in a profession we don't play the role of the victim we acknowledge our role take responsibility to make veterinary profession in india respectable responsible and great i thank you all for your time thank you all for your attention i thank intas pharmaceuticals for transmitting this webinar for the benefit of my professional brothers and sisters thank you so much
thank you very much sir my pleasure for your brief uh, understanding on uh, how the telemedicine will work and how the future of veterinary practice in coming times especially considering covid 19 uh, where the situation is entirely challenging uh we have uh, received a lot of queries uh, during the session sir okay so there are a lot of uh, uh, questions and uh, queries uh, veterinarians uh, need to uh, understand so uh, i'll request you to answer a few of uh, queries uh, so, so uh, i request uh, uh, to answer the few of the queries which i'll uh, name and uh, question Please. on behalf of the veterinarians okay uh, dr asit kumar satpati have a question the treatment of shoulder luxation in dogs okay he wants to know about treatment of shoulder luxation in dogs yes sir uh, see luxations can be either partial or complete okay i'll 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 uh, explain it from surgeon's point of view it can be either partial or complete first what we need to know is we need to take a radiograph find out whether it's only luxation or it's also associated with any fractures because a luxation needs to be set the dislocation needs to be set so first of all we need to take a radiograph and in many times in shoulder luxation you need to give anesthesia to take a radiograph because the pet could be in lot of pain so first you sedate the patient examine the patient sedate the patient take a radiograph make a provisional diagnosis of what the luxation is whether it's anterior luxation posterior luxation which side the bone has gone and depending on that you will have to surgically plan how you are going to set this luxation whether manually you are going to set this luxation or you will require to do some sort of a surgery so that will vary depending upon case to case so depending on the luxation you need to take steps further but radiograph under anesthesia first would would allow you to plan the next line of treatment thank you sir for answering the questions uh, next question is uh, we are having from dr avinash goswami uh, he want to know about anesthesia in cat okay so there are more surgical questions i'm happy so uh, anesthesia in cats uh, yes he's right tricky but the best anesthetic is one which you are used to now i use ketamine okay for routine surgery i would use ketamine and triflopromazine or there are various combinations of anesthetic but before you give anesthesia anesthesia is an art as well as a science the type of anesthetic you use will depend upon what type of surgery you want to do major or minor whether you just want to sedate a patient or you whether you want deep anesthesia to what is the condition of the patient whether it's an elective surgery whether all the parameters of the patient are normal or it's a surgery where you going where is where there's an emergency surgery where the parameters with the physiological parameters are haywire and you are doing an emergency surgery to save the life of the patient so anesthesia also will depend upon the type of surgery you want to do and the condition of the patients if it's an elective surgery if it's an elective routine surgery say like a uh, ovary hysterectomy i would prefer ketamine okay because you can give it easily you can monitor it well of course there is no anesthetic which is absolutely safe all anesthetics have their own limitations but you should use anesthetic which you are used to and before you give an anesthetic you must thoroughly examine the patient whether the patient has any other conditions like heart problem or liver or kidney problem or there is toxemia which will affect the outcome of anesthetic because anesthetic they can be minor surgery or major surgery but anesthetic is always major so we have to be careful when using anesthetic especially in cats thank you sir for your brief answer the next question is from uh, dr uh, raya chitambaram he want to know that corona from pets is a zoonotic or uh, or not 
please clarify okay this is a tricky question because i know as much as the doctor knows because corona virus is a novel virus it's a new virus very little of it is known or literature is available on the net to know the zoonotic conditions the zoonotic ability of the virus at present i will only say until we have complete details of corona virus let us take care let us each one of us take care to prevent the spread of corona virus whether it is transmissible from animals whether it is not transmissible from animals that question will come second first is take care of the yourself of people and pets use all the guidelines laid down by the world health organization the reason being why that is why this virus is called as a novel virus because it's a new virus no one knows about it much so until we are complete we have complete and definite knowledge let us one rule let us follow let us take care and prevent the spread thank you sir uh, the next question is uh, from uh, dr n mahatma uh, he has a question that uh, recent days dogs are exhibiting signs of severe cough and uh, do we uh, need to correlate this with current uh, covid 19 or uh, any other condition cough is very common in dogs cough is very common and cough has got various orig origins like a cough can be related to lung problem a cough can be related to a cardiac problem a cough can be related to the uh, dog has been kept in a kennel for long time so cough as such has been there in dogs for a long time even before this corona came so what we need to do is we need to thoroughly examine the dog find out the cause of see cough is a symptom of a disease it's not a disease symptom for disease so we never treat the symptoms we treat the disease so when cough is there the veterinary doctor can auscultate the chest find out the condition of the heart find out the condition of the lung find out the history whether the dog was kept with any other dogs having cough if necessary take a radiograph find out whether they, he can see radio, uh, any lesions do a blood test find out whether there is an infection so once you follow all these steps you will be able to diagnose cough not all coughs you relate to the present situation i can understand every time we have a cough because the present situation we think of only one problem but we need to as i said we need to take it very lightly not lightly in the sense like we need to see it from all angles rather than only one angle all right sir thank you very much uh, the next question we have uh, from dr faruqi bagwan uh sir he want to know you uh, as a surgeon he want to know from you the management of long bone fractures in dogs okay that's an interesting question management of long bone fractures in dogs now see if uh, you see the classification of fractures fractures first of all fractures can be classified in various ways long bone especially you have a simple fracture in which only the bone is broken you have complete fracture incomplete fracture then you have may have a fracture in which the fracture fragments have distracted or they are overriding or it's a comminuted fracture into several pieces so first the treatment of fracture will come second first is we diagnose we take a radiograph and find out what type of fracture it is whether it's a stable fracture or whether it's an unstable fracture a stable fracture is fairly easy to treat while an unstable fracture would require some advanced surgical procedures now so once an x ray has been taken and you decide that the fracture is simple a simple ca plaster cast or uh, or a bandage could help if it's it's an incomplete minor fracture but if it's a major fracture if it's a major fracture where the bone is completely broken or it's committed then depending upon the fracture fragments you need to plan your surgery so what you will do whether you want to do some surgery like say bone pinning or plating or external fixator so this will come only second when you have diagnosed what type of fracture it is what is the age of the dog what is the muscle trauma whether it's the front leg back leg so depending upon see after all surgery also is a judgment you need to judge you need to evaluate the case so whenever a fracture case comes to you take a radiograph stabilize the patient plan the surgery get all the instruments whatever you are and then you go in for stabilizing the fracture there are various ways there that there, there can be a two hour lecture on fracture stabilization but answering his question i would like to say that 
first we need to find out the type of fracture and depending upon that we take a next step of how i'm going to depending on the experience some some doctors could have experience in plating pinning some may have not so depending upon the experience you have depending upon the infrastructure you have depending upon the type of the dog you know you have to take a decision so it's a decision which has to be taken well thought of and after studying the fracture thank you sir it's a very brief and uh, hope we clarify the uh, queries of doctor so i'll take one more question and uh, then we are moving towards the concluding the session uh, this question is from doctor uh, dipanarayan rai he want to know is cat a carrier of coronavirus can you repeat the question please uh, sure uh, is cat is a coronavirus carrier cat is a coronavirus carrier Oh yeah, I will have the same depth of knowledge as the question, Doctor Saab, because see, let me tell you once again, as far as Corona virus is concerned, very little is known. So let us not open a mouth and say something which will affect the cat population or the people having cats. So once we have a lot of literature available, a lot of data available with us, I think until then. it is better we don't commit to anything see because this is a new virus very little is known some sporadic literature here and there is available so i think we need to be careful once again i'll tell you the situation is such the current scenario is such that in all cases whether it's corona virus not virus it's better we take care of ourselves from everybody and prevent infection right now our aim of veterinary doctors of all the human population everybody is one to prevent its spread so let us prevent its spread let us start living life peacefully as earlier and then we can take on these things of what can be done about pets thank you very much sir so uh, dear viewers uh, these are the few queries which i uh, try to uh, uh, respond it from uh, dr vishwas rao sir uh, raised all the queries we will uh, responded you through your concern email ids and the answer will drafted by uh, after this session uh, dr vishwas rao sir will help us to draft the question and we will uh, uh, answer you through your email ids so uh, thank you uh, all the viewers to take your uh, precious time and get connected with us in this uh, digital platform uh, pitpot intas pitpot live Uh, on behalf of all of you i uh, thanks uh, uh, dr vishwas rao sir to uh, be available for us in this uh, crucial time and get uh, make aware uh, regarding the current situation and how to do our uh, clinical practices uh, thank you very much sir and uh, thank you each and every one of you uh, stay safe thanks